production underwriting for Ruckus has been made possible in part by the generous contributions from Fred and Lou Hartwig and from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Ruckus, our weekly food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trends of the times. We hope you noticed we've been off for a couple of weeks. <laughs> now we're back at a new time, 730, and ready to take a look at what's been going on. I'm Mike Shannon, joined by the Ruckus panel, lobbyist Woody Kozad, media consultant Mary O'Halloran, star editorial writer Yale Abuhaka, and Urban League CEO Gwen Grant. So this is not the only place a ruckus can break out. But who would have thought one would break out at Mayor Sly James' State of the City address? Apparently, not everyone agreed with the mayor's optimistic outlook. And one man, a former candidate for state office, identified as Darren Black, decided to take matters and the microphone into his own hands. Those early efforts resulted in $5 billion in investment. This man had just got through talking about exactly what the he ain't Yale and Gwen were both in the audience. Uh, Yale, this must have been quite an experience. Uh, what did you think when this all started to happen? Well, I mean, the, the very first thing you think is, is there a, uh, a skit going on or whatever? Because actually the mayor <laughs> talked later. I checked my notes and no, that, that guy wasn't supposed to be there. He handled it pretty well. He, he, handled, he? It, he handled it fine. And there's a little bit of controversy about whether his security and the police handled it as well as they could have either pre or, you know, even afterward. But the... Then the bottom line is, very unfortunate event. Um, it did maybe liven up things, and you know, people will pay attention next time mayor, the mayor has a state of the city speech. Um, it did take away from some of the positive stuff he was talking about. And you know, the, the actual, I think, bottom line to me was that the mayor, in his speech, if Darren would just sat down and listen to the speech, he would have heard the mayor talking about, here is some of the progress we're making on the east side. And is it enough, as I wrote in my column this morning, no, it's not enough progress, but there hasn't been enough progress under, you know, five different mayors I've covered in a quarter century. He's done probably the most in two years of any mayor I've covered. So it's not, it's progress, but not success. All right, the protester was apparently complaining about discontent with the city's treatment of the east side. Do you think he was expressing, however inappropriately, uh, an opinion that's widely held, Woody? I think he was acting in a movie that's playing in his own head. I, I, you know, you've got to wonder if the guy did this in front of the mirror at home like De Niro in Taxi Driver. I, look at the way he's dressed. It's, it's uh, you know, working poor activist from, from the costume department. Look, uh, no, I don't. I mean, I think there's plenty of discontent on the east side. I don't think he's necessarily very representative of it. Uh, Gwen, uh, you and I exchanged some emails, and in one of them you suggested that not this man himself as a representative, but in terms of what he's expressing, this discontent with the way the government treats the east side of Kansas City is something that a lot of people tend to agree with. Well, yeah, there's nothing new about discontent no. uh, with respect to the allocation of resources on the east side. I mean, there's nothing new about that. Problem. But there's a specific councilman who's being criticized uh, pretty this, strongly. Yeah, there's a lot of discontent with the leadership or lack thereof of, of uh, third district city councilman Jermaine Reed. And I think that there, there are a number of people who've expressed their uh, concern for his inability to bring forward any uh, substantive um, economic development in the in the district. Uh, he's been said not to show up at meetings. There are a number of, of complaints with regard to that. But this this Duran Black guy is um, someone who seems to have his style is to go from zero to ten uh, on any issue. Uh, he and for someone with that type of temperament to think that he could run for office. I mean, he can run, but to actually well, he, he be elected, run. he has won. He, he had about 13.8 percent of the vote right, in the right, primary yeah, yeah. in a state representative election, in a yeah. state rep election. So yeah. to think that you can run for mayor or the city council uh, and be taken you, I, I don't seriously. think we had a chance to mention, I'll go to Mary here, uh, Mr. Black is, at least according to all the press reports, announcing as we're recording this program on Thursday morning that he is going to run for mayor in, what, 2015, the next yes, election? Yes. yes. Mary? Yes, and I can't wait. Can you? I mean, I'll predict um, he won't succeed. Well, one succeed. thing you don't get to do when you act like <laughs> act like a crazy person is you don't get the microphone. I mean, someone just needs to take this nice man, I take it he is, 
and teach him the basic rules of how it all works. I want to I want to salute Mike, the mayor. I, I've never seen a public official be as coolly sophisticated yes. in the face of one of these. He didn't run, which is what a lot of people would have exaggerated the threat, first of all. Secondly, I watched him very closely. He made, a, he looked at, at, at Deron Black to see if he was dangerous and made a quick judgment that he wasn't. And so he just kind of looked at him. He didn't scream and holler and run. And on the other hand, he, he wasn't overly uh, angry or in any way uh, critical of the police. Uh, however, now, I want to say, pay also, Marlon Bowie. I mean, he, everyone just loves this yeah. guy. Yes. He's been guarding the mayor since I remember Kay Barnes. He yeah. was her yeah. bodyguard. I think he goes back before that, as a And he's fact. such a great yeah. guy, and I just loved yeah, how perfect. swiftly he got. Oh, he Boy, did he. Fast. And this guy's a foot taller than Marlon. It was, it was really quite a good well, deal. In a column that it's Yale wrote far. before the, uh, far the far State far. of the City, uh, in a column Yale wrote before State of the City, outlining some challenges for uh, Mayor James. He indicated that uh, he needs to find more activities for the youth of Kansas Absolutely. City and needs to do more to improve Kansas City schools. And I would ask you, Woody, uh, are those really part of the mayor's job description? Well, they certainly aren't traditionally, but I remember when Mayor Barnes uh, came into office, one of the first things she announced, she was going to do something about the school district. Mm -hmm. And she quickly quieted down. And, mm -hmm. and every, I think it may become traditional <clears throat> because Mayor James talked about it when he was running. We're going to do something about the school district. And they get in and find out the mayor doesn't run the school district. And so uh, there's, there's just not a lot they can directly do about it. Now, we're talking about, at this point, about a state, possible state takeover, uh, uh, probable state takeover down the line of this district. Uh, what's the mayor going to, how well, big a role will he have what, then? What the mayor is trying to do is, and he he did announce that, he did talk about it in his speech. He's got his um, Turn the Page, Turn the page mm -hmm. initiative to work on uh, reading comprehension uh, so that every child is reading at grade level at, at the third grade. But the other role for the city, which is the mayor is talking about, is, is allocating more resources to community, neighborhood and community centers so that there are or safe recreational uh, uh, venues for young people. But Gwen, he also, let's be clear to all the people out there, they, oh, we're just coddling these kids. He's also pretty upfront saying, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of the parents not knowing where their kids are. And, you know, we all know all the, you know, reasons for, for that, except that he has a good point. The city does not have enough money to open its community centers 24 hours a a day and you know just an well, off chance some kids might stay well, there and not shoot each other or whatever so you have to there's gonna be a fine line there yeah. but I do agree with him saying yeah. we can we can provide more activities. main thing that mayor has to focus on is bringing jobs to this city so that people <laughs> oh, in those sure. neighborhoods have jobs they have the food and clothes yes. and everything that children they need, need the education and also too. stop focusing on doing other things other than, there are lots of community center things that can go on in a school Many cities mm -hmm. have turned their schools in the urban centers into community center-like uh, facilities. Built. Yeah. Cincinnati yeah. being one of them. Well, Lots and, of things and people have happen. to remember also, uh, they can be unhappy about <clears throat> government's lack of action or the failure to complete certain programs and direct their anger at a mayor. But a mayor of Kansas City can't snap his fingers and make things happen. He doesn't have that kind of authority or that no, kind doesn't. of power. Darn it. Nope. Well, well yes, right. darn it. There should be a strong I don't know mayor why system. Can't do that. Uh, <laughs> well, there is a growing effort to have the state take control of the Kansas, uh, Kansas City School District, as Woody mentioned. There's an equally strong desire to have the state give back control of the police department. To that end, presumably, Mayor James has appointed a 30-member commission to study the issue. Co-chaired by former Mayor Kay Barnes and outgoing police board member Pat McInerney. James, who is on the police board by virtue of being mayor, refuses to give his opinion about state versus local control. Because he has a unique vantage point, would it not be helpful to hear from him? Let's ask Gwen, who just happens to be one of the members of that 30-member commission. I don't think it's particularly helpful to know his his opinion on this. <laughs> when you appoint a commission to do a, you know to do a study, then you want to allow them to do that uh, unfettered by your 
uh, personal opinion, and I think you know that that's fair that he's taking that position. I think it's obvious what my position is. I've stated it here a number of times. So when I got the phone call from the mayor, I did state that when he asked, I'm like, oh, this is great because you know where I stand on the issue. He never said where he stood on the issue, uh, but I. I think I know. I'm not going to talk about it I here. think I know, too. I bet he is for <laughs> local control. Well, Why else would he uh, impanel this well, commission? Yeah, that, you know, you one might assume that. Uh, he certainly <laughs> talked about it in his... Uh, <laughs> he talked about it in his uh, State of the City, city yeah. address, and he pointed out the, you know, that the city has, uh, you know, we fund the police department, but we have absolutely no control over its decision-making <laughs> process, which would, you know, well, is a sticky... Mar Mary, does this... You've been on lots of commissions and committees. This strike you as like a dog and pony show so that down the road we'll have a report that dog? you can, well, just that expression. So you have a report say, look, look, here, a study has indicated that this is exactly what we need, uh, local control. Yes, well, yes yeah. exactly. I mean, it's, and, it's a, and I'm so happy that the Kansas City foregone now conclusion. On now on board. on board? Holy cow! They've been on board. They've been on board look, for years. Uh, years? Uh, you, yes. Uh, not decades. Okay, Gwen, okay. I'm happy that you're on the board, but if you go on the list, it's an enormous board. It's you're gonna huge. Have, you're going to have so much fun on <laughs> that board. I'm sure. I mean, it's yes. great fun. It is large. People. It is diverse. <laughs> and, and I would and applaud it. the mayor for having a yeah. commission, but I don't know that it has to go on forever. Everyone's going October. to agree on this position. <laughs> have you met is yet? October. Uh, no, we uh, haven't. No. We haven't met yet. Hurry. Hurry. No, they have no. reasons for wanting this to move at a certain pace. Well, right, you know, I, you know, I think when you do this commission thing or a task force thing to to hopefully arrive at an obvious ending. Um, you know, you. Uh, the point is to engage all of these, and there are people on there who are opposed right. to it. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to engage yeah. diverse opinions. Yeah, and that's you're pretty important. close to all this. Will the outcome be <laughs> there is a need for local control? Well. One, I sure hope so, because there's no compelling reason no. to keep it the way it is. Now, uh, to the time of timing, and what practical event would October be, for example? Well, it comes out in October, and if indeed, as I hope, it says, hey, let's move to local. And then, uh, importantly, they will say how we're going to move. Here, we're going to keep a um, appointed commission, but it reports to the mayor, whatever. We like have the park board. Work to and do so mayor. then you have, but you have to, here's yes, the important you point you got to get to the state <laughs> legislature. <laughs> and get the state legislature in 2014 it, to approve it. Just now, Woody, make, will they do it? Just, just very quickly, Woody, Woody. The, it either would come into law by the state legislature approving it or the state legislature putting it on the ballot? I think the state legislature is probably going to wind up doing it itself, but the, uh, it, the problem here, what's really going on is you have an all-Democrat police board for the first time in 40 years. Mm -hmm. It has approved unionization of the police department with agency contracts. It is now, for the first time ever, withdrawn its opposition uh, to repealing the statute that keeps the Kansas City Police out of politics. They're doing all the dirty work before the city takes control. So the city won't have to unionize and politicize the police department. It'll be that way when it's handed to them. And, and, and it will work with the fire department and run the city. Battle going on over oh, right to work. I know you hate that expression, yes. but yeah. that's what the news well, yeah, story yes. called it at the police department. But we're out of time for the segment tonight. We'll talk about it, I'm sure, in the future. <laughs> in Kansas City, Kansas, there's a race for mayor that features the two finalists in the recent primary, Ann Mergia and Mark Holland, both members since 2007 of the Unified Government Commission. Kansas City Star political writer Steve Kraske reports the two have virtually identical voting records. The big split came in 2011 over whether to hike the property tax rate by about 9 percent. Holland said yes, Mergia said no, and Holland's side won. Holland also won the five-way primary with 47 percent of the vote. Mergia pulled in 23 percent. But Mergia has since pulled in some impressive endorsements, including one from commission member Nathan Barnes, who finished third in the primary. So, Yale, do you think this vote on taxes is going to be critical in the way this race is decided? Well, yeah, I guess I disagree with Steve's premise. Uh, that, that kind of it was in the headline, oh, they're the same, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty darn important vote. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ann Mergia, mm -hmm. I was at a forum last night where she goes, I'm not for any property tax. Oh, so you're for laying off firefighters and police. Okay, mm -hmm. let's get that straight. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I talked to Mark this morning because uh, we're working on editorial endorsement for the weekend. And, by the way, it's going to be Mark Holland um, because we think he's the best qualified candidate to continue Two things. One, the progress that's going on on the West Side, which everybody celebrates. 
But you've got to move on urban core redevelopment, <coughs> which he has talked about a lot, and to her credit, Ann has as well, but he has talked about a lot. I think he's going to be better on that issue, frankly, than Joe Reardon and Carol Marinovich were, who yes. are his two biggest supporters. <coughs> you talk about high-profile support, yeah. well, having <laughs> right. the two last mayor CEOs, popular mayor CEOs support you, it's much better than Nathan Barnes. But, but you know, yes. like I pointed out a few but weeks ago, when you have those fire. two endorse you, you also have the enemies right. of those two However, opposer. yes, but the, the enemies that were on the losing end of that property tax issue yeah. vote, by the way, the, the gang of four lost on that issue. So it's very important to note, as you go forward into this, into the race, which I think is kind of a possible turning point for, for the Wynette County and Kansas City, Kansas, will you well, kind of continue the progress, I, or do you go back to Ann, which is going to be a lot of fighting going well, on, and I'm not me, sure she well, has the vision for a powerful Kansas City, Kansas. Let me just say, I, you know, I talked to Mark Holland yesterday, and he reminded me on this tax question, since you just said we might be discussing it, and here are the taxes that Ann Mergia has voted to raise. The sewer tax, the storm water tax, the hotel guest tax, the sales tax, and the payment in lieu of uh, tax on utility well, you bills. you want a lover. Stop it. Those, <laughs> those are the taxes that she has voted to raise. So any kind of effort to kind of portray herself well, as anti-tax. Well, she has impressive union support. She, oh, She's got the go. IBEW. I, I was going to tell you the union support that Mr. Holland has. Right. The uh, Fraternal Order of Police, the Carpenters, the Teamsters, the Plumbers. He has the support of Ray Daniels, perhaps the most respected man in Kansas City, Kansas. School superintendent. Former. School superintendent, former school yeah. superintendent. Everybody from Tom Burke to yeah. Maureen Mahoney. Well, they, they both have and a long list of, huge of group endorsements. They both have a lot of, you know, they both the, have the, a lot of endorsements. The thing is, who's going to get, who's going to have the best ground game to get out the yeah, vote? Exactly. Ground because game. there was a hidden factor yeah. in the primary. Well, it was, you had a snowstorm. Snowstorm. You don't know I, where. A lot the of people couldn't vote, and I was, am, yeah, exactly. I was among them. I could not so get out of the cul de sac where I lived. There's a unknown factor in terms yeah. of who's I got the I machine get out. to was, get out the vote. Twelve that's inches of snow. That's how we know. Life is a cul de sac and a grim life <laughs> at that. All right, what Tony's Kansas City website calls Mayor Sly's toy train, and others call the streetcar starter line, got the green light from a judge this past week. What County Executive Mike Sanders was calling a massive step forward in metro transportation, a commuter rail system got shut down by Kansas City Southern. The rail company changing its mind and saying the line could not end near City Market. It had to end at Union Station. And that's unacceptable to Union Pacific, the other rail company involved. County Executive Sanders is known for his meticulous planning and attention to detail. So did Sanders get something wrong, or did Sanders get wronged, Mary? Well, I think that the only way to answer either of your questions is to talk about the facts in this case. The Kansas City Southern Railroad has been supportive, as a matter of fact, deeply engaged in looking to bring commuter rail to Kansas City and to reconnect the whole metro area. They have never given public indication of any sort that they would veto a, a plan or a program going to people, going to a vote that came, that had it ter its terminus at Third and Grand. And they have been negotiated with, they've been kept informed. This program, Mike, has, that, that Mike Sanders has had, he is the public <coughs> champion of the commuter rail and uh, multimodal well. transportation system for Jackson County and, and really has devoted three years of his life to it. Question is, why are they doing this now? All right, Why what's the answer? Pull? Well, the, here's what the rumors say. That they see potential, <laughs> and rumor has it, all right, it. that if the um, pipeline from Canada, the Keystone, is, Keystone mm -hmm. Pipeline is approved by the President of the United States, they would merge with the Canadian Pacific right. Railroad, and they would have all the way to the north and all the way to the Pacific or the Gulf to become the carrier, the preferred carrier, if he okays it. If he doesn't okay it, no, if he, let's see. Yes, yeah, if he does. Yeah, yeah. So, and, so they're playing for time, waiting to see yes, what happens. Yes, they don't want, they well, may not want any of their tracks encumbered in order to wait well, and see how much money well, they can make and it would, the potential would be enormous. There's other speculation I saw on Tony's Kansas City. Oh, good Lord. That, yeah, uh, come on, well, come uh, on. You answer the speculation. Uh, that may why, why, why are you why why I've got to say what it is yeah, well, first. Oh, oh, okay. Speculation 
was cited on Tony's Kansas City. There's a lot of stuff oh, on God. there. It may not all be, you know, absolutely That's accurate, but, oh, you know, God. what news organization is always 100% accurate. Oh, uh, a cite on there said that, uh, that Mayor James got involved with this because he did not want the commuter rail system to interfere with all the attention being given to the starter line oh, system. Well, first of all, yeah. there is no... Well, is that, is that's, that no, stupid? That's not, yeah, that's okay. stupid. All right, that's 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 all right. we've okay, answered the, we the allegation. Right. Okay, but now, from, from the very beginning, this has been a Kansas City, Missouri, Jackson County, they, yeah. Kansas City Area Transportation Authority, and Mark have formed a, an incredible... Uh, communion on this, if you want to call it that, plus all the eastern Jackson County mayors yeah. from Independence to Lee Summit to Carson Ross out in Blue Springs. Ma this yeah. has tremendous support. Okay. And it's, it's one thing you can say about the mayor is he's pretty direct and straightforward oh, with where he is on a position. I don't think he'd have to go, you know, underground to try to derail the railroad, I mean, the, the, the rail initiative. So that's just kind of ridiculous. Well, Plus, his initiative is already going forward. I mean, what's... Look, and, and, and by well, the way, it starts at third grand. Yeah. The, strength <laughs> of, the strength of the county executive's idea is that it, you're partnering with private industry, so yeah. you don't have the upfront yes. costs of building the right. infrastructure. The weakness yes. of the county executive's idea is that you're partnering yes. with private right. industry, <laughs> right. which has no obligation to tell you what their motives are at any given moment, right. which can change in accordance with their business right. plan or the needs of their right. shareholders at any time. They have not wronged anybody and the, their obligations to their shareholders. And you said well, this, Woody. You said that back before when we talked about it, that the railroad could go a different direction. Yeah, yeah. They, also, that can hey, they also know, Woody, that there's no legal or engineering way in which this this can be uh, terminated at Union Station. Well, there just isn't. Mayor may, may not be. All I'm saying is when you, get it, when you decide to partner yeah. with private enterprise, they're on their own agenda. You don't know what that agenda is, and they're but, not obligated but, to tell but, you. But along the way, did Kansas City Southern, according to what Mr. Sanders had to say, say to Mr. Sanders, now look, this, this is tentative. We may not be able to do this because of exigencies of our business commitments. Did Their public statements a couple of weeks ago about this and recently have been not in tune with what they have said all along. They have been part of, they have been kept aware of, they have actually been negotiated with in terms of the third and grand a terminus all the way along. So this is a surprise and it, it is very discouraging for those who, who see this opportunity of a commuter rail system as one of Kansas City's best opportunities to move forward. So maybe uh Executive Sanders should have waited a while longer oh, no. before well, he going had public. No option. He, Look, he had surprise no. could happen anytime. Yeah, yeah. If he started today all over again, right. he, he could go two or three years and, and get another Mike surprise. Mike has promised that he will not go forward until all no. the I's are dotted just, and the T's are crossed. Just quickly, Yale, yes. is commuter rail still a possibility as envisioned by Mike well, Sanders? Not this year, and it'll only be next year if you can trust the untrustable railroads. Okay. Good <laughs> now we head to Roasted Toast, our <laughs> weekly effort to build up or tear down people and events in the news. We start tonight with Gwen. I'm toasting uh, Marlon Bowie, the mayor's uh, security uh, guard, for the swift uh, action he took uh, at the State of the City address to protect the mayor and remove Duran Black from the premises. I think he did a fantastic job. And a salute to the mayor for the positive manner in which he conducted himself under those circumstances and the way he's handled himself in the media since the event. Uh, despite my general preference for prosecutors today, I'm going to toast the public defenders of the state of Missouri. Normally when public employees cry out that they're overburdened, I laugh out loud and thank them for the injection of humor. But the public defenders in the state are overloaded and overloaded to the point where sooner or later we're going to get a lawsuit and, and, and a bunch of people aren't going to be going to jail who ought to because they're not getting proper representation. We've got to do something about it. Several bills in the legislature in Jeff City, uh, without endorsing any one of them, something has got to be done because the caseload is way beyond what the number of public defenders we have can possibly handle. Well, this is a toast to red light cameras. You remember the controversy. Uh, oh, red light cameras are going to destroy Kansas City, and they're just money-sucking, grub-sucking, things like that, and they're going to hurt the people. Well, let's see. Since then, red light camera incidents have gone down, which means fewer people are running red lights. Uh, accidents have gone down, which is all a good thing. So I think all the supporters of red light cameras should take a bow. 
Well, I want to toast a young man who is 33 years old. His name is Thomas Young. Thomas Young is a Kansas City veteran of the Iraq War who was, uh, whose spine was severed in uh, 2004. He volunteered for the military, and now he has decided that he is going to die on his own terms. He is in a uh, situation now where his health has deteriorated tremendously. Do not miss the front page of the Kansas City Star today and the story Matt Campbell wrote about him. I just want to quote him briefly. When you feel like you've had enough with life, you can choose to go out your own way. You don't have to struggle through every day just to make, make it because you've expected, you're expected by society to endure until you die naturally. His mother is supportive and at his side. Do not miss reading his letter to George Bush and Dick Cheney. He is a brilliantly brave man, and I toast you, Thomas Young. And finally, I've been watching television with the closed captioning on while walking on the treadmill at the Sylvester Powell Community Center most mornings. And during all the coverage of the new pope, I learned some important information reading what was on the screen. The pope is the vigor of Christ on earth, he will likely focus on advantage -alization. Some say the Pope's first job should be to clean up his own louse. And the new Pope's name, France is. And that's Ruckus for this week. Be sure to join Nick Haynes Friday evening at 7.30 for Kansas City Week in Review. And now on behalf of the Ruckettes and the Ruckus crew, Mike Shannon, thanks for watching and good night.